thank you for joining us at the World City Summit organised by our Singapore government partners, the Centre for Liverpool Cities and the Urban Redevelopment Authority. I'm pleased to welcome you to the UK Country Spotlight, where we'll highlight two of the major forces influencing our people and planet today, digitalisation and sustainability. The UK has made great strides in transitioning from an industrial economy to a digital economy. London, Bristol, Birmingham, Peterborough, Belfast and Glasgow, where we're hosting COP26, are some of our country's leading smart cities. These cities have innovated by harnessing IoT, AI, machine learning and security, not only to better deliver services to citizens, but also to enable better planning and use of resources. We're delighted to have with us today Dr. Mike Short, Chief Scientific Advisor for the Department for International Trade, and Mark Enzer, OBE, Director at the Centre for Digital Built Britain. They will talk about the UK's Smart Cities initiatives and the journey to net zero. They will share their experiences, challenges, learning, successes, and how they see technology and innovation shaping social care, mobility, education, environment and sustainability. I hope this Country Spotlight session will provide you with some actionable insights to work into your policies and projects. Do get in touch with us if you want to find out more about the UK's initiative and to explore collaboration opportunities. Thank you and enjoy the session. Mike, hi. It's great. Good morning, Mark. Yeah, How it's great. great to see you here for a, um, a morning fireside chat. Well, it seems great doing it, but I'm sorry we have to be remote from all the audience and from each other. Yes, yes, but we've got a great subject here, haven't we? So um, hopefully uh, we can do it justice and, uh, uh, and kind of spark some thoughts. Uh, and even if we are remote, people can feel like they can join in. I suspect uh, the audience are very keen to understand what we mean uh, by this sort of digital or smart cities and, and perhaps thinking about some of the outcomes. Have you thought a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, I, I do think that that's exactly the right place to start with the outcomes, um, because um, I, I think that provides focus for, for digital. It it's kind of gives it a, a meaning and a purpose, the reason why we're doing it. Uh, is to improve outcomes uh, for people and society and for nature. Uh, and, and I think that uh, that way, where we take outcomes as the starting point, then it also has a chance of being the end point. You know, we actually can achieve those outcomes. But I think we need to start with those outcomes in mind. Yes, yeah, so whatever systems we have, clearly they need to have those outcomes in mind and help to better plan and use the resources available. But when it comes to defining the cities uh, for the outcomes intended, how, how would you define the cities yourself? Uh, typically, smart cities are generic. Uh, would you have any better definitions to use? Um, I might stay away from trying to define it um, because I think that there will be um, many different shapes and sizes. Uh, what I feel is probably it's, it's better to describe smart cities uh, and uh, describe those in, in terms of, of purpose uh, and what they're doing uh, for people and society and, and nature. Uh, and I think that um, when, when we have that view, um, then we can see something that is uh, secure uh, and green and efficient because because that's that's what then delivers these desirable outcomes for, for people. So, so I think in the same way that uh, cities themselves come in all sorts of different shapes and sizes, uh, so will smart cities. Um, but I, I really think it needs to be outcome led rather than tech led, because I, I think if we see technology um, as a key enabler, um, then it kind of puts technology in its rightful place. And, and what a fantastic enabler it is. Um, but I think it needs to be in the service of something that is higher. Uh, and and you know, hence what we are starting to talk about with outcomes. I, I agree with you. I also think that there are a few other adjectives we could bring in, such as clean, um, maybe making sure it's a clean city, uh, maybe, maybe making sure it's information rich, suitable for tourists, for example. Um, so, again, they're outcome based, but they, they are a level below perhaps the broad smart city umbrella. Yes, yes, in, in, indeed. And, and I think that um, 
if we are starting with the uh, with the citizens, starting with with people and society, um, and seeing what people need, uh, then that informs everything else. Uh, and so, yes, you're you're right. The you know having the information for for visitors is 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 part of that. Um, but uh, I think in in mentioning information there, you, you touch on a really rich theme um, of of where the value can be in smart cities. Because I, I think I see, and I'd be quite keen to explore it with you, actually, because because I see um, information uh, in many ways being a carrier of value. Uh, and that uh, when we make decisions based on that information, we kind of release that value. And making better decisions faster uh, is a key way of, of releasing value in smart cities, uh, as we've said, uh, for better outcomes for, for, for people society and nature um, and and I'm not sure that we have really grasped the value of information um, that there, there sometimes feels like there's a kind of a mad rush to roll out specific bits of technology as if technology was some kind of silver bullet uh, but, but it, it rarely is however I think that if we see technology as a key enabler uh, and it's in the service um, of um, getting better information. So, so it's kind of starting with data, isn't it? It starts with data. We, we do something useful with the data to generate insight. From that insight, then we can make better decisions. Uh, and technology can kind of be an enabler of that information value chain. But the thing that releases the value uh, is making better decisions. I, I agree, but I, I think a few examples would be useful. Certainly when we look at the London data store, we can see how the sharing of information through that data store has helped to unleash innovation through apps and different solutions that may not have been thought about by the traditional transport authorities. Uh, we're also seeing better data sharing for addressing congestion. How can we minimize congestion in cities? And maybe even uh, the idea of intelligent parking, where parking can actually notify you of parking spaces available and where your nearest uh, electric vehicle charging post may be. Uh, it seems to me information flow and, and access to that data is absolutely critical. Yes, yeah, I, I can completely agree. And, and I think I think when we go down that, that route uh, and start to explore the value of information, uh, we can consider the value of other digital assets actually as well, you know, like digital twins. But but just continuing on the information piece for, for a while, uh, I, I like what you're saying about kind of providing information to the the end user, uh, and that example of the of the parking spaces is is a good one. Uh, but I, I think we can also imagine using information uh, at a kind of a, a city wide cross sector view as well, y and and releasing the value of information relating to the systems. So I'm not, not talking about personal data here, I'm talking about systems data. Um, but uh, what, what I guess I see is uh, in the context of a city, many different systems coming together with energy and transport and telecoms and water all kind of overlapping each other. And, and you could describe it as a, as a system of systems because they are all interconnected. Uh, and the information flow uh, through those systems and then hopefully between the systems uh, is um, a kind of a goldmine waiting to be unlocked um, of releasing value for citizens. And so, so I think that we can see uh, this kind of information, <coughs> um, this kind of information golden threat being something as, as being essential to smart cities. We've also seen a few examples of where better sensing helps cities. So UK company Utterbury, who's done sensors on bridges, for example, to manage the maintenance and, and routine changes to, to bridges. It might be more of a wholesale or city to city <coughs> application, but it has indirect benefits to the, to the citizens as well. Clearly helping to reduce and manage congestion again but also maybe making sure maintenance is optimised in the same process. Um, my example of, of intelligent parking may well be provided on a city basis, but it has benefits to the citizen. So the value chain may be extended from a wholesale to a, a retail or citizen point of view. Yes, 
Yes, I can. I completely agree. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, is it is it worth us just exploring a bit bit more this um, system of systems view of a, of a city and seeing how that relates to um, to people's well being, really? Because because I think that there's a there's a danger, isn't there, talking in systems terms that it sounds very abstract. Um, but but I have a pretty s strong feeling uh, that it, it's the um, efficient running of those systems and not just is, as isolated kind of siloed systems, but the connections between them is, is key to um, the, the, the good running of the whole city. So, so I guess um, I, I guess I see this systems of systems point and being able to understand what's happening in the system uh, and then um, having the insight to manage it better um, as being uh, you know a, a real key enabler of of smart cities and and the and then the um, outcomes that we talked about at the top yes and, and i think if we look at for example energy in isolation from environment we're missing the system of systems point if we look at transport in isolation from energy again we're missing the system of systems point so there needs to be data flow across the traditional sectors within any smart or intelligent city uh, otherwise, we're not really addressing the citizen in a, in a coherent way or a systematic way. Um, yes. I think it's also important to look at what are the key enablers are. I don't want to get into a big technology debate, but you know, data itself and data collection is, is a key enabler. But so is the infrastructure or the connectivity you need and maybe even the design of the system to make sure it is part of a system of systems. And then lastly, the finance. It's quite interesting to see how finance might be uh, offering a form of green finance to help uh, with the more systematic design of greener cities as well as uh, more efficient cities. So there are lots of enablers in, in that area and I think it's beyond simulation into things like digital twins that we can see new tools and techniques helping to grow these uh, cities appropriately, cleanly and greenly. Yes, yes I, I completely agree and, and I think <clears throat> I think you touch on a lot of the real key enablers there. I, mean, I, I wonder um, whether it, it's useful for us also to see um, data um, as infrastructure in this uh, in this piece. So, so you know, when we talk um, a little bit about making the connection between the systems, uh, so that we can understand what's going on in the system of systems, um, then then it kind of points towards the need of interoperability, so that uh, data from um, from say the energy network um, makes sense in the transport network because if we look at uh, electric vehicles you know you ask the question is that part of the energy system or the transport system the reality is it's both and so there needs to be this interoperability and, and I think with that view then you can start to see interoperable data um, as actually being an infrastructure uh, in its own right um, and that that then is a real key enabler because uh, at the moment, what it feels like is that uh, data kind of sits in silos uh, and it's very difficult to, to get it across the silos because of this interoperability issue. I certainly like the idea of data flow, therefore treating it as infrastructure is a good way of dealing with it. Uh, we see certainly in the UK lots of examples for pay-as-you-go insurance in transport. So if you start to imagine vehicles that aren't insured per annum or per vehicle, but maybe for the distance you travel or the route you are taking or the the zones you're crossing insurance is an interesting crossover from using mobile phone data to help uh, optimize transport uh, we can also see environmental data helping with health so health health alerts based on environmental data and better environmental sensing again i'm not promoting technology i'm, I'm really trying to promote a solution that requires a systematic approach to its design Yes. Asthma alerts would be a very good example of crossover there. Yes, I again, I completely agree. And, and, and I think that um, you know, what you're doing there is is very neatly showing that connection between the system, the services that the system provides and then and then the outcomes. Uh, and you know, when, when we think about well-being and you, know, you just mentioned asthma alerts there, you know, the, the well-being of, of citizens uh, is absolutely an outcome um, of the system providing services. So, so um, if, if we're considering these uh, these enablers, um, I think we've probably covered quite a lot of the 
of what feels like hard enablers, um, you know, things which can be put in place that, that the tech, the stuff I was talking about, the uh, interoperability and the data infrastructure. Uh, but I think equally important um, are the soft enablers because um, we can provide a lot of these kind of hard technical solutions, but unless they're adopted, they're kind of useless. Uh, uh, and that adoption piece, I think, therefore, is key. Uh, and, that, and that's a soft issue. You know, we need to address um, you know, the legal aspects of that, the commercial aspects, possibly the regulatory aspects, uh, but also some of the behavioral and cultural aspects that mean that these great things, these great opportunities that we're talking about, can actually be adopted and the potential value actually get released. One of the behavioural aspects which has become very significant is addressing the pandemic. And, you know, I feel sad for anybody and any country that's faced the worst of the recent pandemic. But we recently produced as DIT a, a directory of 100 uh, British companies that are specialising in digital health and particularly helping people to get uh, health uh, advice at home. You know, if you can't get to a hospital or to your clinician, you're really having to do it online. So to me, a healthier city has to be part of the mix. It's very much citizens based, but looking at the systems that support the citizens who are less able to travel, perhaps during a pandemic. And yes. we'll see the same in education. We'll see the same in uh, working from home. Uh, so, so some of that connectivity has clear crossover and some of the data that gets transferred has clear citizen benefits. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, I mean, I think when it comes to the, the, the pandemic, um, it does feel as if it's emphasised some some realities, so, you know, some things which are already important, but it, it's kind of emphasised how important they are. And we've already touched on how, how critical well-being is uh, and that maybe that is um, connected both to nature and our built environment. But I think also... Um, we can, we've seen how decisions have long-term consequences and that we really do need to make better decisions. Um, I'd also maybe suggest that the pandemic has shown that change can happen quickly. Uh, and so when, we, when we're talking about some of these changes which are needed to bring in or, or to unlock the value of smart cities, you can see them actually happening. And then the final thing I would think is that um, the pandemic has emphasised that um, we do need to get more from less all of which we can do um, if we pay attention to what we just talked about in the last 25 minutes. Yeah. And, and I do actually notice how quickly has the time gone. That's ridiculous, isn't it? But um, I, I mean, in, in this context, um, I, what, what would you think were the kind of the absolute key take home messages? <laughs> it's, a, it's a bit of a big question to, to dump on you. But uh, what, what do you reckon? Well, I think retaining the citizen focus and outcome focus is, is key. But I think the sector of energy needs more attention, uh, both on a city level and on a citizen level. Um, the emphasis on the road to net zero, I think we all need to think about in terms of how we work, uh, rest and play, how we eat and uh, consume various things. Uh, to me, the road to net zero is very important. Obviously, the UK is very proud to be hosting uh, the COP26 talks in Glasgow in November this year. Uh, but I think it's a duty of all of us to think about the environment in a fresh way, uh, where we can protect our landscape, protect our cities as well as our citizens. Yeah, I think um, and that's a great way of, of uh, summing it up. Uh, I, mean, I, I think from my own perspective, it's, it's kind of too big a thing to, to sum up very neatly. But um, something that I do feel is important in all this is um, to recognise that the built environment and, and therefore very much cities uh, really do have an explicit purpose. Uh, and, and that purpose has to be to enable people and nature to, to flourish together. Mm. Um, because we've, we've seen how important um, nature is to us. You know, that's part of what we've seen in, uh, in, in the pandemic, for, for sure. And then I think if we if we're seeing that as a, a purpose of the built environment, then uh, we can see smart cities as being a way to uh, unlock some uh, some pent up value um, for both people and nature. Um, and then just touching on the point that, that you made around net zero, uh, which I, I see as being kind of a generational challenge. You know, it's some, something that seems to have crept up on us. And now we're realising just how 
immensely important it is. But um, it does seem to me that quintessentially it's a systemic challenge and it does demand a systems based solution because you know, we can't solve net zero in silos. So, so we do need to break those silos and the best way of breaking the silos is to share information across them. And um, I think if we if we kind of build that that message you know, into the net zero message, um, then then we're going to be adding something of, of real value and it, it kind of recognises information itself has has genuine value. And then kind of a last little thought on the back end of that is that if we do start to crack these systemic challenges, you know, because we use systems based solutions and we see the, the role of information in that, then we're, we're nicely set up to solve some other systemic challenges, like, for example, circular economy. You know, that's another one that you can't solve in silos. So, so I think um, I think in some ways it feels like we're on the edge of, of doing something pretty clever and pretty, pretty special with smart cities. Uh, but to my mind, we really need to unlock the value of information to do that. I agree. And, and I think uh, the circular economy brings in how do we reduce our waste, not just circulate it? You know, how can we recycle? How do we reduce our consumption? We need to think about those things and have systems to support us so we can share services such as transport or, as I saw the other day, use AI to help identify waste so it can be properly recycled. Uh, there yes. are all sorts of um, UK companies and other specialists who can help in this area. Um, and it's good we're talking about it because we can then get on with it and share ideas across nations as we should be doing. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. I and mean, I think we get to that point where, where you don't see anything as waste. You see everything as resource. Um, and yeah, wouldn't, wouldn't that be great? Really good. Well, I think all the resources before us, we need to harness them and use them effectively anyway. It is a systems of systems world and these outcomes need to be uh, delivered. Yes. Perfect. Nice to talk to you again. Yes, very much so. Thanks for the time.